Good afternoon, I'm Trista Keaton and you're watching The Source. Today's Source will cover the recent tuition increase and opening night for DePaul alumna Teresa Shrunks till death to us part. <laughs> Musical production, Till Death Do Us Part, features an abusive relationship that was once healthy but turned sour after the birth of the main character's bastard son. The show tries to tackle a variety of social issues and commentary with a screen projecting domestic violence statistics before the show. The show, lasting about two and a half hours, continues their performances into the weekend, starting at 7.30 Friday and Saturday, then a 3 o'clock matinee on Sunday. We talked with Teresa Schrunk about the opening night and how the process was for production. Hi, my name is Teresa Schunk. Um, I'm an alumna of DePauw. I graduated in 2023 with a Bachelor of Music Education and a minor in theater. Um, I'm now a choir and band teacher at Sullivan High School down in Sullivan, Indiana, which is just south of Terre Haute. Continue working on this. My biggest goal next is to start orchestrating it. Obviously, it was just for piano and then for some guitar as well. Um, but I'd like to, you know, make this a for a full pit orchestra um, as well. So, yeah. So I'd say the biggest person that we almost knew immediately was uh, Sakura who played Sharon. Um, she she came to us and she originally shared with us that she was uh, a pianist and so we thought maybe that she could be the pianist for this instead of me so I could kind of like step back um, but then she came in and auditioned and sang and she just blew us out of the water with her singing and I think she exited me and, and Ron Dyer were like well I a lot of people um, I knew were here tonight um, and even more people are gonna be coming I know to the next few shows um, Two of my students from my high school came tonight. Um, they're members of my choir, um, and one of them came up to me teary-eyed after the performance. Um, so that was really sweet to see because, you know, you know, I don't like making people cry, but I kind of like making people yeah. cry. We also spoke with cast members Oliver Spencer and Annette Tron. I'm Oliver Spencer. I play Ben in this show, and I, it's opening night. We just performed. It's It was honestly really really nice it was nice to see everyone just kind of like leapt into their full poten full potentials um, and I'm so proud of everyone in this cast it was really exciting Annette um, playing as Demetria tonight was our opening night and everything went m more better than I expected it to be everyone was high on energy and I'm so glad that everyone came to support support us DePaul has been steadily increasing their tuition since 2010, and students are tired. Tuition at the start of 2010 was estimated at $46,135 annually. However, with about 3% consistent increase of DePaul's tuition, the school is now at a whopping $57,990. The explanation for this price increase remains the same. Administration wants to ensure our beautiful campus, residential halls, and quality education. We now move into the War Room, a segment of The Source, with PAC student and researcher Jake Wood. Thanks, Trista, and welcome to the War Room. For our first story, unidentified gunmen shot dead a traditional monarch at his palace in Nigeria's southwestern Kawara state. Sagun Arimu, who is the traditional ruler of the locality of Koro, was shot and killed at his palace while his wife was abducted. This attack comes amidst the backdrop of a number of kidnappings by armed criminals for the purpose of ransom. No ransom has been demanded as of yet for Aremu's wife, and the identity of the attackers remains unknown. Aremu is the third traditional ruler to be killed by gunmen recently, as just a few days ago, assailants killed two and kidnapped a number of children for ransom. Nigerian security forces have promised to find the perpetrators, but as of yet, no leads have emerged. For our next story, France announced that two of its citizens were killed in a Russian drone strike in the southern region of Kherson in Ukraine. The citizens, who were volunteer aid workers, were killed when Russian forces bombed the town of Bereslav. Three other civilians were injured in the attack, which matches a continuing pattern of the deliberate targeting of non-combatants by the Russian military. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs joined the Ukrainian and French governments in condemning the attack, stating, quote, international humanitarian law prohibits attacks on humanitarian workers, and the repeated violations should be of grave concern to the world. That's it for The War Room, and thank you for watching The Source. Please sh be sure to follow us on all social medias at D3TV to stay updated on the real news.